Hey everybody, Stability AI just came out with the brand new Stable Diffusion 2 model, which was trained fresh, and it was also trained at 512 resolution and 768 resolution, and uh, we're going to get much better generations with this. The only downside is the web UIs out there, like Automatic 1111's web UI, which is amazing, is not yet working with this new Stable Diffusion 2 model, so you can't just drop it into the models folder and expect it to work right now. It will work later when he gets to that. We very much appreciate his efforts, and I think he's absolutely amazing, and I am really excited to use the web UI. But for now, we can use the command prompt and still generate art amazingly. It does take a little bit of a learning curve, but it's totally worth it. And I'm trying to make it easy for y'all today. So first things first, um, we need to download Python version 3.9. Okay, not three, not the new one, 3.11. We need to be on 3.9, okay? And specifically, we need to get the 64-bit one, okay? Because we're gonna need to download PyTorch later, and you can only do that if you have the 64-bit version of Python uh, 3.9, okay? So trust me on this one, and make sure you add this path to your environment variables, and uh, go ahead and click Install Now. So we're getting Python fresh, and when you install Python, you also get PIP, which is a Python package manager. And we're going to use a lot of that in just a minute here. So um, with that said, we have now gotten Python. And now we're going to move over to getting Git. So Git lets you download uh, repositories like from websites uh, like GitHub. So we need to have Git ready to go. So we're on Windows here. And we'll go ahead and get the 64-bit version of Git. And you just want to go ahead and zoom right through the uh, installer. So, so in order to use pip, go ahead and access your command prompt and go ahead and type pip and make sure that pip actually works. And as you see, pip worked. And so um, now we can start installing these packages. So I've laid them all out nicely. As you see, we have package number one, which is called OpenCV. Just go ahead and you can just paste these commands and let them run and basically uh, OpenCV will start installing. As you see, OpenCV and NumPy just installed. So number two was NumPy. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it anyway, just to make sure. See, already satisfied. So we're already done with, with uh, dependency one and dependency two. So I'm just putting X's here. And um, next up is PyTorch. That's another dependency that we need to get. So there's uh, two tricky things with PyTorch before you can just zoom right along to getting it, which is we do need to make a quick edit to the registry. So go ahead and pull up regedit, which is the Windows registry editor. And we're gonna need to navigate through these registry folders in order to get to a specific rule. So as you see here, I have it all laid out. Let's go to H key local machine and then system and then current control set and then control and then file system right here and you'll find a rule in here called long paths enabled we're gonna go ahead and double click on that yours would have been zero change it to one which will enable long paths on Windows we had to do that because when you install PyTorch it's a very long file path and it would actually cause an error so by uh, enabling that we're able to do long file paths now so um, the second trick to installing PyTorch is that we need to know which which uh, version of CUDA that we have. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, then you have CUDA. So let's go over to the PyTorch website and we have all these different settings. So we definitely want the stable version of PyTorch. We're on Windows. We're using the pip package manager to install it with the Python language. And then it wants us to choose our version. So it's only between 11.6 and 11.7. .7. To find your version, Go to the NVIDIA control panel, let that load up, go to help, system information, and then components, and you'll see here, CUDA, mine's 11.6. All right, so we can go ahead and close that. So I'm choosing 11.6, and it gives us our pip code to type. There we go. And as you see, now PyTorch is installing. This is probably the hardest dependency to install and also the slowest, all right? While that's going, I'm opening a new command prompt so I can keep it moving. So we need omega conf. So pip install omega conf, super quick. tqdm is another one. inops. As you see, I'm just flying right through these. Then we need some watermarking modules. 
So there's I'm watermark, and then there's invisible watermark. So we're grabbing both of those. As you see, they go really quickly. And then we will also install transformers. And uh, this is robots in disguise. <laughs> so um, I'm just waiting for this watermarking one to finish and then I can uh, throw down the bumblebee. Uh, I'll just open a new command prompt for that one. All right. So Autobots roll out. We got Transformers installed now. And uh, yeah, looks like everything worked here. We got all these successfully installed and we got that one installed. So uh, I'm gonna pull out the marker here and I'm gonna start marking. We did Transformers, we did do the watermarking, we did all of these, okay. We skipped PyTorch lighting because I was letting PyTorch itself go through, which it just finished. So now I'm going to go ahead and do PyTorch lighting. I did it in that order just to be safe. You might be able to install it separately. Don't overthink it. <laughs> so there goes PyTorch lighting. I'm going to put an X next to that now. Whoops, there we go. And uh, yeah, we got PyTorch as well. So with that said, okay, so I did forget one dependency that I'm going to write down real quick, which is git open clip with pip okay <laughs> that, hey i'm a rapper literally check out my music um but uh get open clip with pip um it's the hip thing to do um, make sure you install open clip underscore torch open underscore clip underscore torch with pip and that is yet another dependency that we needed we got everything up to initiating the environment so i'm actually going to delete i'll just separate it all right um so initiate the LDM environment. This is just a uh, making basically an editable Python environment with the stable diffusion file. But actually, I won't be able to um, do that until we actually have the um, stable diffusion uh, base files ready. So let's get those base files ready first, okay? So you just need to create a new folder. We can call it stable diffusion 2, as I just had it and go ahead and open it up and this is where we're going to install stable diffusion version 2 which like i said does not have a user interface yet but i'm sure it will have one soon and so what we need to do is navigate to this folder by using change directory or cd command and go ahead and paste that new folder we just created and so now we are within that folder which is what we needed all right and next up what we're going to do is use git, uh, git that we got earlier and we're going to go ahead and pull a repository or clone a repository. Um, so we're going to type git. Make sure it works just by typing git, which it does. So we're going to go ahead and clone the repository and it's going to end up in the folder that we have cd'd into. Okay, so clone the repository. This is the stable diffusion base, but it's not the model yet. Okay, we do need to go and manually get the models and add them manually. So with that said, I have the download links in the description to get the 512 trained pixel model of Stable Diffusion version 2.0 and then the 768 model. These are pretty big files. I have already downloaded them and they are both sitting right here. Okay, and so I'm going to be cutting them out of my downloads and come into this new cloned repository that we just cloned and go ahead and make a new folder, call it models and this is where we can drop our models that we downloaded and you'll see i renamed them from the default name that they are to 512 model and 768 model that's just a, a good way for me to keep track with that said we have just successfully cloned the stable diffusion repository and loaded it up with our two models and we also blew right through getting all the dependencies with pip and so the next thing we need to do is initiate that editable Python environment like I mentioned earlier. So make sure you're CD'd into the, uh, into the folder. And uh, we can go ahead and run that pip command. Now, as you see, I got an error and that's because it says setup.py is not found. That's because we actually need to enter even one more. Um, let's see, we need to go further into this okay this is where we need to be a cd into the next folder and there's our setup.py right at the bottom there as you see so now 
we can initiate this editable Python environment. Okay. And as you see, now it's created an environment.eml file. And if we were to open it with Notepad, you can just see that it understands this Python editable environment. And so um, <clears throat> there we go. We've successfully created this editable environment. So with that said, we have now uh, very quickly gotten all of the dependencies for Stable Diffusion. And we have installed Stable Diffusion and the training models. And so now it's time to use command prompt to start running some, some art generation. So with that said, let's go ahead and close these old ones and we'll even close this one and this one and we just have this nice new one here all right before you can run python command and start targeting the scripts folder that has the text to, to image python we obviously need to cd into here one more time so let's cd into here one more time and so now we're targeting this folder and as you see that folder has the scripts folder in it where it then has the text to image Python script in it as well. So with that said, we can go ahead and test out some generations. So um, I tried multiple generations and uh, currently I'm having an issue where I'm running out of VRAM in order to generate 512 by 512. Um, but generation is working with this model right now. I'm doing 256 uh, just for testing purposes here. And uh, this website, which is now linked in the description, has a very nice breakdown of all the different commands you can use in the command prompt. But uh, just to go over it one more time, you open up your command prompt, you'll cd command over to your stable diffusion folder, and then this is when you can start using these Python uh, command scripts to uh, do your prompting. So just for example, here is me prompting for a 256 by 256 image. So this is definitely going to require some memory optimization. Um, I do have an eight gigabyte graphics card and I am running into out of memory issues trying to generate 512 pixel images, but uh, I was able to generate 256. I'm going to be messing around with some memory settings and seeing if I can uh, stop that out of memory issue from happening. But anyway, we just successfully installed Stable Diffusion and the new Stable Diffusion version 2.0 model. And then we generated some images right from the command prompt. And so uh, mess around with this a little bit. Let me know how your memory is looking on your end. And uh, we'll try to see if I can't make another tutorial on how to optimize the memory so that we can uh, generate without any issues. But uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button and the subscribe, please. It really would help me out in return. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some of your art. Have a good one.